All right, we'll get started. Uh, it's nine. Uh, thanks, guys. Thank you all for joining in. Uh, lovely to see you all. Uh, some of you joining in for the first time. That's awesome. Thanks for inviting your friends. Uh, okay. All right, let's just pray and we'll get started. Uh, I'll hand it over to JP, who will lead us in a time of worship. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this uh, time, this awesome privilege that we have. That we can come into your presence, uh, call you up, our Father. Holy Spirit, come and have your way. We invite you to come and do what you do best. And minister to us as we minister to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Father, we look to you. There is so much more in you, Jesus, than we experienced. Let's just pray that God will reveal himself to us. In Romans chapter 5, we read that through Holy Spirit, God reveals the love of Jesus in our hearts. chapter 8 verse 3 when I consider your heavens the work of your fingers the moon and the stars which you have set in place what is man that you are mindful of him the son of man that you care for him and we think about how much beautiful the creation of God is and look at us and he has each one of us in his mind the beauty of Christian life is it's not just a life that we walk not knowing where is the end, not knowing what step to take next. 
the beauty of christian life is knowing that there is a god who loves us there is a god who loves us beyond measures there is no limit to his love tonight even as we are in his presence let us pray that god help us to understand how much you love us and help us to love you more god that God wants to fill us each one of us with his love tonight. Tell him God, thank you for your love. That you decided to pour out on us, Lord God. We cannot walk away from your love. Your love is so capturing. Your love is chasing us, God. And tonight we receive your love. We receive the Father's love. Receive the Father's love. And we delight in your love, Jesus. Is there a way to show the passion in my heart? Can I? How truly great I think you are, my dearest friend. Lord, this is 
is my desire to pour my love on you, lie all upon your feet, like wine for you to drink, like water from my heart. I pour my love on you. If praise is like perfume, I lavish mine on you till every drop is gone. I pour my love on you. Oh God, oh God, we pour our love on you, Jesus. Is there a way? Is there a way to show the passion in my heart? Can I express how truly great I think you are, my dear? This is my desire To pour my love on you Like oil upon your feet Like wine for you to drink Like water from my heart Pour my love on you The phrase is like perfume I lavish mine on you till every drop is gone. I pour my love like oil upon your feet, like wine for you to drink, my king, like water from my heart. I pour my love on you. If praise is like perfume. Lavish mine on you till every drop is gone. I pour my love on you. Pour our love, pour our love on you, God. We pour our love on you. Pour our love on you. We pour our love on you. Man, um, I just believe uh, you know, as we were worshiping, there's a couple of scriptures uh, that I wanted to share. Uh, feel like uh, God was putting in my heart um, this popular scripture that we all know from Hebrews chapter 13, uh, verse 8. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And another scripture that I'm reminded of is Joshua chapter 1, verse 5. Uh, Joshua chapter 1, verse 5 says, As I was with Moses, I will be with you. This is God telling to Joshua. He's speaking to Joshua. He's saying, As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I just feel like uh, to, that to some of us in, in the middle of, in the midst of transition, um, in the midst of transition, this uh, this Joshua chapter one verse five is where the nation of Israel is. Uh, they are in a huge transition uh, geographically uh, and mentally. Everything is just changing. Everything is changing. And Moses, their leader for so many years, had just passed away. Um, 
And so there's this sense of panic in the camp and Joshua, the new leader, doesn't really know what to do, but everything is changing. But the only constant, the only constant is Jesus. He says, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. Because Hebrews 13, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And uh, I just feel like the Lord wanted to encourage uh, someone, some of you, uh, in the midst of the transition, the situations change, your circumstances will change, everything in your life will change, but my worth doesn't change. I am always constant, says the Lord. Um, is there anything too hard for me? I will never leave you nor forsake you. He Hebrews 13 verse 5, it says that I will never leave you nor forsake you. He's caught and he's actually the writer of the book of Hebrews is quoting from Deuteronomy. And that's the promise we as the people of God have in our lives today. And that is the hope that we have, that, that is the hope that we cling on to that he will never, okay, he, Jesus will never leave you he will nor forsake you because he is the same yesterday today and forever and i also feel led to pray for us for some of us and i and i don't really know why but uh, for people who've been battling the spirit of oppression or depression father i just release your freedom right now over those who have been uh, who who are battling oppression god who are, who are feeling oppressed by, by, by so many things, Jesus. Lord, I cancel and I speak your freedom. I speak the freedom of Jesus right now to invade every single person's heart, Lord. Every single person's heart. Jesus, I release the joy of heaven. I release the peace of heaven. I release the fullness of heaven into the hearts of your people, Jesus. Come and invade our hearts, Lord. Thank you, Thank you Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And I also sense um, there is a, there's a season of supernatural provision. Sorry if my internet is unstable. Uh, I just feel like there's going to be a season of uh, supernatural provision. Um, uh, I want to release and say, the God who provided manna and quail in the desert is able enough to provide for you in your wilderness. And so thank you, Father, and I release that supernatural divine favor of provision over your people, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 And thank you, JP. Uh, thank you for leading us in a time of worship. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining in. Um, okay. Just in case you're new, uh, I'm Roshan, um, good to see you all. Thanks for joining in. Um, we're gonna dive right into the word. Uh, our special speaker for uh, tonight is, is that, uh, does anybody want to give an introduction to this very special person that we have who's going to be bringing the word of God? Okay, this is all the way from the land of Vadapau. We have Alicia who's going to be sharing the word. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best yeah. intro land of all. <laughs> no, I just had one. That's right. So, <laughs> oh. <laughs> but uh, over to you, Alicia. The floor is yours. The mic is yours. Go for it. Thank you, Rosal. Well, I thank you guys. I thank you for that time of prayer. Thank you for that worship. GP it was amazing. So let me just share my screen.
loving freely please type it in the chat tell me guys oh, i'm figuring out how to see this chat okay john 316 okay what else what else what else come on tell me all right one more john 316 okay loving freely anyone else come on guys i think that i had like 16 people there three people have to play i'm going to wait he first loved us yes what else what else comes to your mind when you hear loving freely one more person reply and then i'll move okay free gifts okay matthew so much babel i don't know what is in matthew 22 37 but take care <laughs> all right so uh for me the first thing that comes to my mind in love <laughs> in loving people loving freely is uh, that jesus says and my slide okay yeah, that jesus says everything and he says love your neighbor as you love yourself right so he says when uh, you love your neighbor as you love yourself and there is this uh, um whole anthem in the church community that you know love god and love people and love god and love people which is all amazing you know but uh, we also forget the other part about love your neighbor as you love yourself so uh, many times we can be kind to others and uh, you know we are very generous and very giving but when it comes to ourselves we are very harsh with ourselves we are very uh, unforgiving of ourselves so even when god forgives us it takes us another week to even forgive ourselves many times so um i was just meditating on this portion of scripture that you know uh, we talk a lot about loving our neighbors and loving other people why does scripture in the commandment itself say love your neighbor as you love yourself so uh, what i've understood over time is we can only extend the same amount of love uh, to others that we give ourselves right so if i treat myself with grace and i'm not talking about uh, so everything i say today uh, is going to be you know uh, slightly exaggerated because uh, all of this is very unconscious so uh, say when i'm especially when i'm interacting with someone who's very close to me so only with the same grace that i treat myself i can treat someone so obviously i'm not going to be uh, crazy with a stranger but what about when it comes to my mother do i treat her with grace do i treat her with patience so uh, if i am understanding if i am treating myself with grace only then i can treat uh, the other person with grace and uh, the second thing is Uh, how i see myself is how i will see the other person and we will get into the details of that but a lot of there's a lot of this uh, uh, theory that you know a thief will always feel like the things are being stolen or a person who lies will always feel that they are being lied to uh so uh the first step in loving uh, freely i think is um my slides are not moving is understanding your significance okay so this is something i've heard a lot but let me illustrate okay so if someone has received a promotion in my office okay and uh, what is my first reaction and we are on the same uh, level we joined at the same time do the same kind of work my first reaction is getting upset all right so i get really mad and i could either get really mad at this person or just get generally upset about the whole situation or uh, you know i could feel just down in the dumps whatever i get upset basically so uh, tell me in the chat and i want you all to think a bit about this why am i getting upset what is my thought behind me feeling upset so i know i'm feeling a certain way right i know i'm feeling upset but why am i feeling upset what is the thought behind that's causing me to be upset let's go come on guys i need a little bit of interaction so what's the thought entitlement okay what else 
Roshan, give me more. <laughs> Nobody else is replying. Comparing, okay. <laughs> okay, what else? Okay, so I've listed some thoughts that I might have here, okay? So uh, let me tell you, uh, one thing, we could go in two different directions, depending on your personality and your type. Uh, one bunch of thoughts that, you know, I can have is I am an absolute failure. You know, this person, we're doing the same kind of work and maybe I'm not good enough or what is the point of even me doing this? Or you can go in the other direction and say, but I deserve this better. You know, they don't even deserve it. I do more work than them. And how come they're getting this? So the first kind of people that have, I have termed type A, uh, if you keep thinking these thoughts to yourself, right? So a lot of times we feel a sense, there's a sense of overwhelming sense of failure, or there's an overwhelming sense of anxiety that, you know, I can't do this anymore. Or over time, this anxiety can turn into depression. And, uh, you know, as Roshan prayed today also, there's uh, more than this pandemic I'm seeing around us that this, and a pandemic of depression and anxiety and there are just so many people who are battling with it and uh, i was just exploring this area and uh, you know seeing anyway so uh, we understand we know our feelings we know that you know okay i'm feeling anxious right now or i'm feeling like a failure but uh, we don't go one step behind right we don't go one step behind and think why are we feeling a certain way right what is the thought or what are these thoughts that i'm speaking to myself right so uh, it's very surface that okay i'm getting anxious but uh, you know if we take a moment and see what is causing that anxiety or what is this thought that i have in my mind that is causing this so um so that's why i said like you know pay attention to your thoughts so uh, why are these thoughts so important so if uh, we see in uh, leviticus 90 leviticus sorry that's the wrong scripture in proverbs 23 7 all right it says for as he thinks in his heart so is he right and in luke 6 45 it says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks right so what i'm thinking what i'm feeling is eventually going to show in my actions right so we're talking about loving freely now if i am feeling like a failure if i am feeling that uh, i'm thinking that you know i'm not good enough or i am thinking the other person is not good enough to have deserved this it is going to reflect in my actions so a uh, one bunch of people the type a kind of people who go into a a, a shell sort of and uh, you know they withdraw and they'll say you know this, this is just not for me uh when i meet this person who's actually received a promotion next time i'm going to be intimidated by them i'm going to have a, some sort of friction i'm going to be like yeah good for you and maybe on the surface i'll be say, i'll say you know yeah, yeah i'm totally happy for you uh, and the other kind of person, the type B kind of person thinking that, you know, I deserve this more because I did more. Uh, next time when we uh, work with this person, we are going to try to push ourselves ahead, right? So uh, can someone read James 3.14? James 3.14. Three fourteen, right? Yeah. But if you have, if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Right. So it says that if I am harboring uh, bitter envy, which is in other translations called jealousy, uh, I'm going to pursue selfish ambition. I'm going to be boasting. So next time I come you know in a setting with this person i'll probably try to one up them i'll probably try to show off and uh, because of something that has affected me and this is very subconscious this is uh, you may not even think that you know oh because they received the promotion and because i felt like this this is how i'm behaving we don't think of these things we just act we just feel a certain way and we act we don't think about why we are acting a certain way so this is I'm just trying to, you know, bring these things to the surface on why we behave a certain way. So uh, next time I'm going to boast or I'm probably going to uh, send an email to the higher up saying, hey, you know, this person didn't do this. I did this and I'm going to try to push myself forward and pull the other person down. Right. So uh, 
let's see what needs to change right so uh, for my action to change my thoughts have to change right my beliefs have to change because our belief is going to determine our actions as we saw as a man thinketh in his heart so is he so if i'm placing why am i feeling you know that um, i am not good enough i feeling the sense of anxiety or i'm feeling the sense of pride and selfish ambition or whatever it is that i'm feeling why is this feeling coming this comes because i said in the beginning you know our sense of significance is coming from receiving or not receiving that promotion right it's not wrong to receive that promotion it's not uh, wrong to desire the promotion and i'll get to that in a minute but my sense of worth is coming from that job is coming from how uh, how i can move forward how i can be better than someone else right so it's not only job i've seen, like the main things is like how well am i doing in my job how financially stable am i how well am i doing in ministry how uh, good is my family all these things uh, sort of in small ways you know in not very obvious ways add to my uh, self worth and i uh, attribute my significance my self worth to these things so when something goes wrong in that it's like my whole world comes crashing down right and uh, you may not act to it in such an exaggerated way but uh, it's in small things that you will react to this like you know uh, these these wrong beliefs this wrong teachings like oh you you should you should move forward in life right it's not uh, wrong to want excellence it's not wrong to uh, be promoted it's not wrong to be validated definitely it's not but when if, like you who you are is being anchored in that right if something goes wrong in that does your world shake if something goes wrong to that can you still be loving to the person uh, to the other person right so uh, what beliefs need to change for me to understand uh, for me to put my significance in the right place so even romans 12 2 says be transformed by the renewal of your mind and what should i renew my mind with definitely scripture so when i am faced with such a situation the first thing i do is i do a lot of self introspection okay so uh, when i am faced with that the first thing i'll do is okay god you know uh, where is my affection where is my uh, where are these thoughts coming from if i am anxious about something where are these thoughts coming from is what i try to figure and you know 9 out of 10 times it says that you know god just says that you know your eyes are not fixed on me your worth is not coming from me so uh, god says that my significance and purpose comes from living in christ your job your family your ministry is only a means to accomplish that purpose living for christ right so your job may be there today it may not be there tomorrow what happens after you retire what happens if you lose the job uh, what happens if your family is not, you know not being the way they should behave the way you are expecting to behave so i just go back and i look at scripture on what god says about me so uh, when i look at scripture when i see that you know i am significant you know i have purpose in christ that he has created me for a purpose and my purpose is to love him is to live for him in everything i do whether it's job family ministry everything no matter what i do no if and if i'm not doing anything my purpose is to worship god that is my purpose right so nothing else can pollute that environment i hope everyone's following me and i'm not like complicating it too much right so how does this uh how does this affect my actions right how if my uh, thought process changes if i understand my significance if i understand uh what is causing this depression or what is causing this anxiety or what is causing this sense of pride or uh, why am i you know putting someone down and uh, like i said you may not even realize it at the time uh, when you understand all that your actions when you change your thoughts understanding that uh, your promotion is not a testament of your uh, ability or your capability your promotion is not a testament of uh, your purpose or your ultimate eternity in christ right when i understand that uh, i can say okay god you know um, this did not happen but it's okay because i am still loved i am still significant and then i can be genuinely happy for the other person right i can celebrate their joy with them instead of sitting and withdrawing in a corner away from them 
right? I can be gracious. I can, uh, the next time, instead of uh, thinking at the back of my mind that, you know, now I need to push myself forward and I need to, uh, everyone's running their own race, first of all. You are in your own lane. Nobody's lanes will intersect. You do the best of your version, not comparing your version to them. So you can genuinely lift the other person up, right? So the next time this person is faced with a situation, uh, is my first thought going to be, hey, they already received a promotion. Let me take this chance to put myself forward. Or am I going to still gra be gracious to them and uh, lift them up, right? And uh, lastly, I can see this person when I see myself significant as significant in the eyes of god i can see this person also as significant with in the eyes of god right so they have done something they have received this promotion and they are completely deserving of it right i i will be able to accept that fact so uh tracking back to the scripture when i see my significance i can see the significance of the other person right i can love my neighbor as i love myself all right moving on all right. So secondly, when I know that I'm freely loved, right, only can I love someone else. So uh, a lot of times, uh, or, or a lot of times we put our hearts in a cage, we put our hearts in a wall, we live these walls around us. And it is so natural that over time, uh, our trust is broken, people hurt us along the way, uh, people behave, you know, um, in not so nice ways to us. And we tend to build these walls around us. And we are not the same people, we are uh, less trusting, we are less uh, giving, we don't love with abandonment. Right. So uh, you think back to the first probably your first love that you ha had, right? So how did you love at that time? When the pehla pyaar, you think back to the pehla pyaar and how it was, it was like so no baggage, right? Personal baggage, nobody has hurt me in life. Like this is the best form of who you are, right? But Christ died, Christ redeemed us, Christ uh, came for that, you know, he took our sins away, he took our pain away. But are we really living in that fullness? Right? Are we really living uh, in a way that if a person comes to me, I'll accept them with open arms? Can I really do that? But like, no, but there are bad people outside. Of course, there are bad people outside. No, but what if, you know, they treat me like a doormat or what if they hurt me? Of course, they will hurt you. Even, you know, what if they reject me? So this sense of uh, why we build this walls essentially is we fear rejection, right? And there is one more point that I can't remember. Right. We want to self-protect. We uh, we want to guard ourselves. We want to uh, put ourselves in these boundaries that, you know, this is your limit. And whatever you want, you say it from that side of the wall. And I'll be nice to you. I'll be kind to you. I'll be everything. But in my heart, am I really able to live in, uh, not love in abandonment for that person? Right. So uh, what happens when I live within these walls, right? If these small actions, these are just examples and there'll be a dozen things. Uh, how often do we see someone uh, fully complimenting another person or talking with absolute kindness? Right. So it's like, oh, hey, I love your hair or I love your smile or I love how you uh, talk or I love how you sing or I, whatever it is. Uh, how many times do we compliment another person? Right? We are afraid of how they will react. They'll think we are crazy. You know, They'll think we are like fans of them or something. How can I allow myself to be in that place of vulnerability? Right, We don't want to put ourselves in that place of vulnerability. On the other side, we want to act with uh, a lot of time. We, uh, we put ourselves in this uh, cocoon of friends. Right, We'll stick with our group because we know that there is safety in that place and we don't want to uh, act in full love so we're like what if i talk to a stranger and they're not nice to me right so before i came to christ i was a full introvert like i just wouldn't talk to anyone i'm still an introvert but little better than i was before and i would come to church and i would run i was just so scared of talking to people and all this is in hindsight now but uh when i accepted christ it was like a uh you know like a light was flipped flipped on and uh, I became automatically more uh, vulnerable, automatically more uh, 
more talking to people more i would talk to strangers all the time and i would love it i was like okay this is amazing why did i not do this before and i never knew what changed but i knew that i'm talking to people more and i never understood why it changed it just changed because i understood uh, the love of god in my life right so uh, when we understand that uh, god truly loves me right and another person's rejection i will feel bad okay don't get me wrong you will feel bad you will be hurt but another person's uh, rejection or another person's words is not going to break my world right it's not going to put me like i said into a place of depression or it's not going to put me into a place of anxiety because when i am hurt i will take that pain and go to the cross right or when something affects me i will take that pain and go to the cross and come back as a person who loves loves in abandonment and i will come back as a person who uh, as first love as a first love and you know it's just this thought of first love when we come with no baggage with no uh, with a sense that you know if we love people as if we've never been hurt as if we don't know that bad exists in the world and uh, some would say alisha that's a very unwise way to live i don't know maybe it is but uh, you know i'd rather be a person who uh, love people like jesus love them and in the process if i'm hurt a bit if i am uh, you know uh, mistreated a bit it's okay it's okay but uh, and my point of this is uh, if you go to psalm 133 right so it says uh, that how good and pleasant it is when god's people live together in unity it is like precious oil poured on the head right so uh, the living in unity is equated to the anointing oil that was over aaron and i've spent so much time on the scripture because i just couldn't fathom it i was like god why are you equating unity to an anointing oil he was set apart it was aaron who was set apart as a priesthood and uh, you know i propose that what sets us apart as this priesthood what keeps us uh, different from the rest of the world and you know keeps us different not even from the rest of the world but even from um, church crowd is our ability to love with abandonment our ability to love fully that when you walk into a room when you smile when you speak your love that you know that loving freely that abandonment with which you love is going to show no matter what is in your heart is just going to show in your uh, not just in your actions but the, in the way you carry yourself in the way you relate to we talk to us so if i walk around in my office and i'm just complimenting everyone people are going to think i'm crazy definitely but that is how i want to love people that is how i want that is how i choose to be because jesus always loved everyone he came across right and that is what set him apart that is what uh, you know took him out that is what people that is why people turned and looked who is this man who is loving the prostitutes and the tax collectors and everyone alike so uh, i propose that you know this loving freely when we live in wholeness and when we understand that our significance comes from jesus and our security and love comes from jesus and out of that place i can love someone uh, that is when we are living breathing gospel so yeah that is my word for today over to roshan well let's hear it for alisha people sure some love in the chat awesome alisha thank you so much um hey why don't you just pray and uh, pray for us and uh, pray and close Thank you father thank you lord jesus heavenly father we thank you for this wonderful time father god but right now we come at each of us gathered here into your holy hands of oh father god as we heard of oh father as we pray oh father god i pray for each person present here lord and lord we just release lord a revelation of who they are in christ a revelation uh, that they are loved lord a revelation that you are the same yesterday today and forever lord a revelation that nothing can separate uh, us lord from from the love that you have for us father god lord we we set aside every hurt every pain lord everything uh, that has caused us so much anguish father right now holy spirit we set it before the cross 
God, we pray, Lord, that you would just take this pain, oh, Father God, that you would teach us to forgive, Father, that you would teach us, Lord, to walk in wholeness, Lord, that you would teach us, Father, that you are our God, you are our Father, Lord Jesus, and you are always good, oh, Father, that you are always with us, Father God. Lord, I just thank you for this group, oh, Father God. I pray that you would teach us to love others with the same love that you have for us, oh, Master. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Alicia, for that, uh, for that word again. Um, hey, everybody else, thank you uh, for joining us. Um, I hope you, I'm sure you had a blessed time. Um, okay, we'll, uh, we'll continue with our weekly uh, youth meetings uh, every Friday at 9 p.m. Um, and uh, we, we'll share the details, the call details, and you can uh, feel free to invite your friends uh, and uh, yeah, what not, that's about it. So good night. Thank you once again for joining. Bye. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you so much.